you're free and you're free and you big boy you are free as well it's really nice in these days where timber prices are going up weekly that you can still get your hands on free wooden pallets and they're still available this one i picked up this morning welcome to proper diy my name is stuart matthews and today i'm going to show you how to turn these into a really smart garden planter with a back green living vertical wall coming up do you like being free I really enjoyed this build as there's no right or wrong you sort of make it up as you go along and at the end of the day without any outlay in terms of money what's the worst that can happen I mean it's a pallet I started by carefully breaking up the smallest pallet of the three to earn some timber boards which I'll need to make the sides of the base Breaking up a pallet like this and keeping the boards in one piece can be a little bit tricky. A good nail bar comes in really useful here. This one that I'm using is the 24 inch roughneck version, which I would highly recommend. It's really important that you de-nail the timber as you go along. Timber lying on the floor with nails sticking out is really dangerous and can easily lead to a trip to A&E. The more boards I removed, the more proficient I got of getting them off without them splitting. Slow and steady is definitely the way to go. I used a board as backing timber to one side of my biggest pallet, Big Red, and screwed it to each slat along its width, leaving just a 5mm gap between it and the central support. That meant that I could saw along this 5mm gap, essentially cutting the pallet in half but just off centre. Screwing this new board in first stops the cut boards from moving around. With the other boards I cut them into half metre lengths as I decided that the bottom part of the planter would look balanced if about half metre in depth. I mean this is really up to you. Oh, sure is a hot one out here today. So, so far, obviously cut this pallet in half. I've also cut some half metre boards here. This is to basically cover both sides. I've cut four on either side, which actually make up the side pieces. Before I put those on, I'm going to do a certain amount of sanding and painting of this, because it's going to be easier to do that before I put these on. I've also cut down some slightly shorter boards that will eventually sit on the inside here at the bottom to stop the soil dropping through. So I think it's time for a bit of sanding. With this sanding, all I wanted to do here was to knock off the sharp corners and edges, but not to create a smooth surface as I'm going for that rustic recycled look. I use my go-to paint, the Cupronol Garden Shades Slate Grey, which I must admit takes really well to unprimed timber and covered big red like a dream. The combination of a small roller and a small paintbrush made quick work of giving this its first coat. And it was nice to paint outside for a change without any worries about paint splashes or drips. While I was at it, I also took the opportunity to paint the boards I've just sawn to length. So while the paint's drying, it's an opportunity for me to have a bit of a break and to tell you that I'm really pleased today that this video is being sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need. Look, it even says so on the mug. Now I'm very well aware that ITS have been supplying the trade for many years, 
but now they've opened that up to everyone, including DIYs like you and me. They've got an excellent website that's absolutely jam-packed to power tools and gardening equipment, plumbing, electrical, absolutely everything. And the ITS price promise means that they refuse to be beaten on price by Screwfix and Toolstation. So they've got really competitive prices and I'm really impressed with their next day delivery as standard. So if you order anything before 7pm, it'll turn up next day, seven days a week. So go and have a look at their website. If you're anything like me, you'll find it absolutely fascinating. And if you spend over £50 excluding VAT and put in the code proper DIY, it took me ages to think of that one, then they'll send you a goodie bundle worth £30 that also includes this mug. So go and check them out. Link is in the description below. So on top of the plant I've just been making, I'm going to put this pallet in this configuration, really as like a vertical wall of plants with soil in each one of these. And really I don't have to do anything to it other than to put some timber underneath just to stop the soil coming out. So this is pretty straightforward. This vertical pallet will just sit on the back of the bottom planter, just fixed with some screws. I drill some holes in the underside of the timber that supports the soil, just to make sure that each section can drain properly before giving this one coat of paint all round as well. just brought the two halves of the planter indoors onto the workbench because it's time to join them together and I'm going to be joining them by screwing these boards for them evenly spaced at either end and I want to be doing it on a flat surface because I don't I want to know that there's no twist in it when I screw these on now you could do this outside on your patio or on a piece of concrete I haven't got anything at the moment that I know is true and square hence why I brought it into the workshop whether there's a small twist in it or not doesn't really matter. But once again, this is the engineer in me coming out. I mean, after all, it's a pallet. Fixing the sideboards, I just spaced with a piece of timber, starting with the top one, making sure it's level, and then moving down. With the rest of the timber from the first pallet I took apart, I cut 10 boards of 470 millimeters, which then can be fitted and screwed inside to make the base. The paint on the vertical pallet was now dry, so I started fitting weed control fabric into the planter areas. This fabric will stop soil from washing out of any of the gaps in these recesses. I trimmed them and then stapled them in as neatly as I could, but you could probably just lay them in, fill them with soil, and then trim around the top, which would definitely save some time. Fitting the top ones were the easiest, as I didn't have any obstructions in my way. I finish by putting a sheet at the back just to cover the gaps in the timber slats. I line the bottom planter in the same way by stapling the fabric and folding it back onto itself to hide the staples. Working on the base is far easier as you've got more room to move and to get the stapler in. The planter is essentially finished now. I've just put in this internal lining to stop the soil coming through these gaps. Just before I put this outside and fill it, just a little tip for you. These take an awful lot of material and if you're going to fill it up with compost, you're going to be spending a lot of money down the DIY shop. So what I like to use is any spare polystyrene that I can put in here as like a void former that doesn't actually affect the plants at all. The sort of plants in here don't need that much soil anyway. But it also means if I put this in the right way, it actually takes less compost and actually costs me less money. Take care, cause that man is 
Just try, boy, it best be well. And though it down, I know I might be headed for teardrops. Now that you got me started, I just can't stop. No, no. There you go, fully planted up. And I think that is looking absolutely stunning, especially when I know how much it costs, which is almost nothing, a little bit of paint and a few nails and screws. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So from my first ever vertical sort of garden, I'll see you next time.